Hey guys, I am Yasser and I am back with another topic of biochemistry. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Let us see what is the significance of lipid metabolism. One molecule of triacylglycerol yields more ATP as compared to one molecule of glucose. Hence, fatty acids are high source of ATP. When triacylglycerol is hydrolyzed, it gives free fatty acid and glycerol. Let's now see the fate of triacylglycerol. When a molecule of triacylglycerol is hydrolyzed, we get a fatty acid and one molecule of glycerol. This fatty acid is bound to albumin. When this fatty acid undergoes oxidation, we get ATP molecules. The fate of glycerol molecule is it undergoes phosphorylation to form glycerol 3 phosphate and isomerization to form dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is used in glycolysis or gluconeogenesis to form pyruvate or glucose. And glycerol 3 phosphate is an important precursor for synthesis of phospholipids. The oxidation of saturated fatty acids is divided into four classes beta oxidation, alpha oxidation, omega oxidation, and peroxisomal oxidation, which is seen in plants and aquatic animals. For unsaturated fatty acids, there is a beta modified oxidation pathway. Beta oxidation is the oxidation of fatty acids at the beta carbon with successive removal of two carbon atoms in the form of acetyl coenzyme A. The steps involved are activation of fatty acids in the cytosol transportation of activated fatty acid in the mitochondrion and beta oxidation in the mitochondrion fatty acids are oxidized in most body tissues including brain erythrocytes and adrenal medulla Now let's see the activation of fatty acids in the cytosol. It involves the conversion of coenzyme thioesters by acyl coenzyme synthetase which is an ATP dependent enzyme or by thiokinase. Pyrophosphate is hydrolyzed by pyrophosphatase into two molecules of inorganic phosphate. Two pyrophosphoanhydride bonds are consumed in order to activate fatty acids to a thioester. During activation in the cytosol, fatty acid in the presence of enzyme acyl coenzyme synthetase, which is ATP dependent or thiokinase, lead to the breakdown of ATP into pyrophosphate which further in presence of enzyme pyrophosphatase gets converted into two inorganic phosphate molecules. The fatty acid gets converted into side chain containing AMP which is known as acyl adenylate. In the next step, coenzyme A comes and uh, joins the side chain to eliminate AMP. This structure is now known as acyl coenzyme A. In the activation of fatty acids, two phosphoanhydride bonds are eliminated. The conversion of pyrophosphate to two inorganic phosphate molecules involves energy equivalent to one ATP molecule. Transport of fatty acyl coenzyme A to mitochondria. The two components involved are carnitin and CAT. CAT is an enzyme called 
कार्निटिन असाइल ट्रांसफरेज वाइल कार्निटिन इज बीटा हाइड्रोक्सी गैमा ट्राइमिथाइल ब्यूटाइरेट द ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ एक्टिवेटेड फैटी एसिड फ्रॉम द साइटोसॉल टू द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया इज डन थ्रू अ कैरियर प्रोटीन व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट इन द इनर माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन The activated acyl coenzyme A from the cytosol is broken down into coenzyme A and there is acylation of the carnitine to form acyl carnitine. This acyl carnitine is permeable to carrier protein and is transported into the mitochondria. Now the acyl carnitine is broken down into carnitine and the coenzyme A present in the mitochondria undergoes acylation to form acyl coenzyme A. Cat1 enzyme is involved in cytosol while Cat2 enzyme is involved in the mitochondria. This activation and transport of fatty acid is due to the fact that inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to fatty acids. Now the final step which is oxidation of activated fatty acids. It involves four main steps that is oxidation, hydration, oxidation and cleavage. oxidation of activated fatty acids involves the conversion of saturated activated fatty acid to unsaturated by the removal of two hydrogen molecules which are taken up by fad to form fadh2 in presence of enzyme acyl coenzyme a dehydrogenase now the structure is known as trans delta 2 enoyl coenzyme a hydration involves the addition of water molecule to trans delta 2 enoyl coenzyme a in presence of enoyl coenzyme a hydratase enzyme this leads to the conversion of unsaturated fatty acid to saturated fatty acid Now this structure is known as L3 hydroacyl coenzyme A. Oxidation involves the conversion of NAD+ to NADH+ H+ which involves enzyme 3 hydroacyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase and there is formation of double bond O on the beta carbon. Now this structure is known as 3 keto acyl coenzyme A. Now the cleavage step involves the breakdown of 3 keto acyl coenzyme A to one molecule of acyl coenzyme A and one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. This acyl coenzyme A further comes back into the beta oxidation cycle. Now let's see beta oxidation in saturated fatty acids. Let's take example of palmitate which is a 16 carbon fatty acid. This palmitate molecules undergoes 7 beta oxidation cycles to give 8 molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. Hence there is reduction of two carbons in each cycle. In the seventh cycle the number of carbon becomes 4 that is 2 carbon plus 2 carbon we can consider number of cycles as number of carbon in the side chain divided by 2 minus 1 so the overall reaction is palmitoyl coenzyme a plus 7 nad plus plus 7 h2o plus fad plus 7 coenzyme a gives 8 acetyl coenzyme a plus 7 fadh2 plus nadh plus H+ plus. Now let's see energetics for oxidation of one molecule of palmitoyl coenzyme A. ATP produced from 8 acetyl coenzyme A is equals to 8 into 12 is equals to 96 ATP. ATP produced from oxidation of 7 NADH is equals to 7 into 3 is equals to 21 ATP. ATP produced from oxidation of 7 FADH2 is equals to 7 into 2 is equals to 14 ATP. ATP consumed is 2 ATP which is used in pyrophosphatase and thiokinase step so the overall net gain of atp is 129 atp for one molecule of palmitoyl coenzyme a now let's see oxidation of orchin fatty acids 
Considering example of 11 carbon side chain on oxidation of fatty acid, we get 4 acetyl coenzyme A and 1 propionate. Now let's see the conversion of propionyl coenzyme A. Propionyl coenzyme A is a 3 carbon structure with a carboxyl group and a coenzyme group attached to the third carbon. Propionyl coenzyme A in presence of enzyme propionyl coenzyme A carboxylase and biotin gets carboxylated at the second carbon. This involves addition of carbon dioxide and breakdown of ATP. The formed structure is known as D-methyl melolyl coenzyme A. This structure in presence of enzyme methyl melolyl coenzyme A racemase undergoes muto rotation at the second carbon. The resultant structure is known as L-methyl melolyl coenzyme A, which in presence of enzyme methyl melolyl coenzyme A mutase and vitamin B12 forms succinyl coenzyme A, which is further used in tricarboxylic acid cycle. Now let's see the oxidation of monounsaturated fatty acids. Let us consider the example of oloyl coenzyme A which is an 18 carbon structure and the double bond between the 9th and the 10th carbon. In the first step, this structure undergoes 3 cycles of beta oxidation to give 3 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Now the resultant structure is a 12 carbon structure with the double bond between the 3rd and the 4th carbon. Now we can say that the 18 carbon structure is reduced to 12 carbon structure by removal of 6 carbon atoms as 3 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. The name of this structure is cis delta 3 dedonoyl coenzyme A. This structure in presence of enzyme delta 3 delta 2 enoyl isomerase undergoes isomerization which is the shifting of double bond from the third carbon to the second carbon. Now this structure is called trans delta 2 dedosinoyl coenzyme A. This structure undergoes 5 cycles of beta oxidation to give 6 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Hence 18 carbon structure oloyl coenzyme A gives 9 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. Now let's see the oxidation of polyunsaturated fatty acid with the example of linoyl coenzyme A which has the double bond between the 9th and the 10th carbon and 12th and the 13th carbon. In the first step, this structure undergoes 3 cycles of beta oxidation to yield 3 acetyl coenzyme A molecules. The resultant structure, which is of 12 carbon and has double bonds between the 3rd and the 4th carbon and 6th and the 7th carbon. This is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A cis delta 3 and cis delta 6. This structure in presence of enzyme delta 3 delta 2 enoyl coenzyme A isomerase undergoes isomerization to shift double bond from the third carbon to the second carbon. Now the structure is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A trans delta 2 cis delta 6. This structure undergoes one cycle of beta oxidation to yield one molecule of acetyl coenzyme A. Now the resultant 10 carbon structure with the double bond between the fourth and the fifth carbon is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A cis delta 4. Now this structure undergoes first step of oxidation in presence of enzyme acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase to form a double bond at the second carbon. Now the structure is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A trans delta 2 cis delta 4. Now this structure takes two hydrogen molecules from NADPH plus H plus to form NADP in presence of enzyme 2,4 dienoyl reductase to remove the double bond between the second and the third carbon. And the double bond which is at the fourth carbon is shifted to the third carbon. Now this structure is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A trans delta 3. Now this structure undergoes isomerization in presence of enzyme enoyl coenzyme A transferase which is shifting of double bond from the third carbon to the second carbon and the structure is known as fatty acyl coenzyme A trans delta 2. This structure undergoes 4 cycles of beta oxidation to give 5 molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. 
So the 18 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acid gives 3 plus 1 plus 5 acetyl coenzyme A that is 9. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button. If you want more videos on e-study, hit that red subscribe button. Be sure you tap on the bell icon to get notified each time a video goes live. This is Yasir and I'm signing out. Thanks for watching. Thank you.